So in today's lesson, we're going to do a follow-up from the investigation that I assigned to you yesterday, uh, which uh, asked you to explore patterns uh, with negative exponents and maybe to discover some trends or rules. So if you haven't done that yet, I would strongly recommend you take a look at that first and try to work through the investigation and get some of the thinking uh, around that idea before you begin today's lesson. So in, um, in the investigation, you would have seen situations where uh, if you had, say, for example, um, I'm going to say 2 to the power of negative 1, then the way that we would take that value and make it into a positive exponent would be to take, take the base and place that as a fraction over 1, and then suddenly that makes the exponent positive. So we could extend that and have a general rule where if we had x to the power of negative 1, then that would be equal to 1 over x. And if I had, for example, y equal a y to the power of negative 2, well, then I could go ahead and make that exponent positive by making the y a frac the base a fraction over 1, and then squaring, right? So, but what happens really if the base itself is a fraction? So, for example, what would I do, for example, if I had 3 quarters to the power of negative 2? Well, I'm going to show you a few things, and then we're going to simplify this with the formula. So I'd like to go back to the example that I had in the previous screen, where I had um, something like y to the power of negative 2. Now, in yesterday's lesson, there were a couple of different ways that we could have seen this. We could have seen um, that all I do is I, I'm going to take whatever the base is and make it a fraction over 1, and then suddenly the exponent becomes positive. But I'm going to argue that there's another way that we can see that. Um, that what we can do is we can think of this as a fraction over 1. And all, of we've, all that we've done is we've simply taken the reciprocal of that base. We've flipped that base upside down, and that would give me 1 over y. And then I've squared, and that allows me to make the exponent positive by taking the reciprocal of the base. And so I've squared the whole thing. And the reason that doesn't show up really when uh, in, in yesterday's lesson we didn't really see that was because whenever we, it, we really did square the 1, but what do we get when we square 1? Well, we end up with 1. So let's extend that to our fraction. So if, for instance, I had 3 quarters to the power of negative 2, well, how would I manage that? Well, in the case of our fraction er, of our, our non-fraction example, we made it a fraction over 1. We took the reciprocal of the base, and then suddenly that allowed us to take our negative exponent and make it positive. So let's apply that to the same situation with our fraction. Let's do the same operation to our fraction. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of the base. So the reciprocal of 3 quarters is 4 thirds. And by doing so, that allows me to take my negative 2 and make it positive 2. Now, I'm not done yet because, of course, I would want to simplify that. And so I would say normally you don't want to write two equal signs in one line, but we're going to do it for the sake of saving some space here. So now I'm just going to square my numerator, square my denominator, and get a fraction that results. And if there's any simplifying that needs to happen, then I would do it at that point. So 4 squared is 16, and 3 squared is 9. It looks like I can't simplify it. So, um, so I've completed this. So let's create a rule or a formula that will allow us to apply this to any, uh, any situation. All right, so we can say in general, if we're looking at a power in the following form, where we have a fraction as the base, and that can be extended to whole numbers because whole numbers can be written as fractions over 1. If it's raised to a negative exponent, we can take that negative exponent and make it positive and then evaluate it by simply taking the reciprocal of the base. Okay, So I can see here in this formula. So let's try a few examples uh, to practice this skill. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is to try each of these examples and then check your answers with mine. 
uh, as a way to make sure that you're on the right track or to make some self-corrections, and then we will uh, take them up together. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at A first. So whenever I see um, that negative exponent there and then the question says evaluate, then I need to take that negative exponent and make it positive. And so this, the base in this case is 4, which is not a fraction, but I can easily turn it into fraction by putting it over 1. And then in order to make that exponent positive, I'm going to take the reciprocal of 4 over 1, which is 1 quarter. And that allows me to take my exponent of 1 and make it positive. Now I know that multiplying, uh, raising anything to the power of 1 is not going to change the base, so I can further simplify down to 1 quarter. Okay, let's look at B. So when I look at B, again I have a whole number as my base, so the first thing I'm going to do is think of it as a fraction. And uh, the fact that there's a negative in front of the 2 here uh, really just changes the base, but doesn't change the exponent. So by taking the reciprocal of my base, I'm not going to be getting rid of that negative in front of the 2. So I'm still going to have 1 over negative 2. And now that I've taken the reciprocal of the, ba the base, the 3 becomes positive. But again, there's nothing that happens to that negative there. It's not connected to the exponent at all. So let me continue to simplify. So really, um, I'm going to take the, I'm going to say 1 to the power of 3 over negative 2 to the power of 3. Um, and then I'm going to simplify further. So 1 over uh, to the power of 3 is just simply 1. And then negative 2 cubed is going to give me negative 8. Now, typically the convention is ma in math is that if we have a negative in the denominator, we're just going to take that and move it out, up, out front of that fraction as negative 1 8. Um, hopefully you did okay with that. All right, let's, let's look at example C. So C uh, asks me to take two-thirds, which is a fraction, and uh, make that exponent positive uh, to evaluate. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the reciprocal of my base, three halves, and that allows me to make my exponent negative three positive. But I'm not done yet because I still need to say three squared sorry, 3 cubed, so 3 times 3 times 3, that's going to give me 27. And then 2 to the power of 3, which is going to give me 8. And then I just want to make sure with any fractions that if there's the opportunity to reduce the fraction, uh, then I want to do that. Um, okay. So, um, in this case, I don't see that, so I'm ready to move on. So I just want to make note about a couple of things here, because I'm guessing that the majority of you have thought at one point during the lesson that why don't I just type this into my calculator? Um, and yeah, absolutely, you could certainly do that. You'll probably find that when you do that, you'll end up with some kind of a decimal. And so in cases where in grade 10 math we're asking you to evaluate negative expo um, powers with negative exponents, we want to see that you have this skill. Uh, we know that you can utilize your calculator fairly efficiently when it comes to exponents because you would have seen that in grade 9, but we re really want to know that you understand the meaning of negative exponents. So I'm going to expect that you are writing your answers in fraction form as we've seen through these examples. Uh, now having said that, I want to uh, have you take a look at this last example, which is a little bit strange, and it's there, um, it's there intentionally. Um, so uh, let's apply the same rules as we have been in this last example. I'm going to make this a power, I'm going to make this um, 0 a fraction over 1, and then by doing that I end up with 1 over 0, and now squared. And so I can further simplify that to 1 squared, which is simply 1 over 0. I want you just, for, I just did this big spiel about not using calculators, but I just want you to take a minute to type in 1 divided by 0 into your calculator and see what you get. Now I'm guessing that what you saw was a big error signal. And the reason you would have that is because I have, in this case, a denominator of 0. So a denominator of 0 means that I'm dividing 
the numerator by zero. I'm dividing one into zero pieces. Well, you can't take something and divide it into zero pieces. It's either one piece or you're dividing it into more pieces. So when I divide by zero, what does that mean? That means that this whole thing, this whole question, gives me an answer that is undefined. And so that's what I would write in that case. So just an interesting situation that happens when your base is zero and your exponent is negative. So let's step things up a little bit by trying an example that's a little bit more challenging. In grade 12, you'll learn about something called a logarithm that will make solving these types of equations a little bit easier, but for now we're going to have to try to use a different approach. So I'm going to show you one strategy that you could use. So when I look at this, um, I, I typically will want to take any negative exponents and try to make them positive. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to rewrite this uh, x to the power of negative 2 as 1 over x all to the power of positive 2. And now I'm going to extend that and, um, and simplify it further. So 1 squared gives me 1, x squared gives me x squared. So now I can see that I'm in a situation where my numerators are the same. And so if my left side has to equal my right side and my numerators are the same, that by default means that my denominators are also the same. So I can therefore make the statement that x squared has to be equal to 9. And so if x squared is equal to 9, I can undo that square by taking the square root and when I take the square root of x squared, I end up simply with x. And the square root of 9, well, that can be either positive 3 or negative 3. So I need to include both of those. All right, so now let me take a look at this example b. So in this case, instead of having my base as a variable, I have the exponent that's a variable. And so what I'm going to do, I can't really do anything with this 4 to the power of x, so that means that I probably want to transform six, uh, 1 over 16 uh, to somehow um, write it as some sort of exponent with, it, with some sort of exponent. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to first off write uh, 4 to the power of x, can't do anything with that. But I'm going to write 16 as 16 to the power of negative 1. And so my goal here in these types of questions is to try and get the same base on both the left side and the right side. So I know that 16 can be written as a power of 4. So in my next step, I'm going to write 16 as a power of 4. Well, I know 16 can be written as 4 squared, so I'm simply going to replace 16 with 4 squared. Just make that substitution because they're equivalent values. Now I'm going to apply my exponent rules, my exponent laws, which tell me that if I want to raise a power to a base, then I simply multiply my exponents together. So I'm going to write that as 4, oops, 4 to the power of negative 2. So now I'm in a similar situation to what I saw over here where I saw two equivalent components. Well, I can see that in this case my bases are both 4. So if my bases are both 4, the same, then that by default means that my exponents or the expressions for those exponents must by default be equivalent to each other. So that allows me to say that x has to be negative 2. That's the only way that the left side equals the right side. Uh, so these last two examples were a little bit more involved. Hopefully you were able to follow and you'll try some practice questions to get this skill down. Um, and, uh, and you'll do some practice with the homework questions I assign.